Hi everyone. In this video, I want to share the resources that I use in my practice daily to conduct my ASP reviews. I feel very taboo saying this because I know in school we're taught not to reference tertiary literature to support our recommendation. However, if I do encounter a infection that I'm not very familiar with, I usually pull up up to date to see if there's an article written on this. Up to date is a great place to get a general understanding of the epidemiology, clinical presentation, general diagnosis, and treatment alternatives for the specific infection. And then you can dig into the references that are cited in the article to delve deeper into the literature as well as to um, navigate to the relevant guidelines for the specific condition. Unfortunately, it does require a subscription. However, I know large, institu uh, large institutions often subscribe to this, and so you may be able to get access to this through your workplace. After getting a general understanding of the infection, I would then look up the treatment guideline to inform the best practices for management of the infection in question. In North America, I would say that IDSA is probably the largest organization that produces ID-related guidelines. In Canada, the AMI Association is sort of a IDSA equivalent, but their guideline repository is certainly not as extensive as IDSA. So practicing in Canada, we still refer a lot to the IDSA guidelines. And if AMI has specific uh, Canadian guidelines, then I would also consider it and compare and contrast the recommendations given in both places. These guidelines are free to access. The Sanford Guide is another very useful resources that I use every day in my practice. I have it installed as a mobile app in my phone. I use it mainly for its antimicrobial spectra, its infectious diseases syndrome management pages, as well as the bugs and drugs. Um, in terms of the medications or drugs listed in there, they have uh, sections on renal dosage adjustment, liver dosage adjustment, as well as body weight dosage adjustment for those patients who are obese. And they also have some pages on therapy duration for common infections as well. As I mentioned, it is available as a mobile app or a web platform. I actually find the mobile app easier to use. And it, since it's on my phone, it's easily accessible for me. Unfortunately, this does require a subscription uh, for both the web and the mobile app. The Antimicrobial Stewardship Program platform on First Line is another mobile app that I use frequently in my daily practice. It is institution specific. So if you work at a hospital who does not subscribe to First Line, you can still access it for free. However, I would suggest that you pick the hospital that's closest to you that's on First Line so that the data and the information there is more in line with your local practice. I use this app mostly to look up quick summary of the common pathogens uh, spectrum, as well as renal dosing for common antimicrobial agents. Bugs and Drugs is another Canadian reference that I occasionally refer to in my practice. It is free and is also available on a mobile app. I use this mainly just to get a second source of information for comparison's sake. In the app, they do have treatment recommendations for common infections, as well as spectrum of coverage for common antimicrobial, as well as antimicrobial dosing and renal uh, dosage adjustments. Your local antibiogram is another extremely valuable resource that you can use to inform empiric therapy decisions. This provides a antimicrobial susceptibility profile of commonly reported bugs in your specific region. We know that the resistance profile of pathogens vary widely with different geographic areas. You can also see if the hospital that you work at has a local antimicrobial stewardship program website. I know many of the hospitals that I've previously worked at do, and if they do, uh, this is great because it tailors the recommendations for specific infections to this uh, sensitivity profile of the pathogens that they see locally. 
And in the occasion when you get the very rare infections or pathogens where there's no guidelines available to guide best practice in management, you may need to resort to databases such as Embase, Medline, PubMed, Google or Google Scholar to dig into the primary literature such as case reports, case series or observational data. Were there any other ASP or ID related resources that you use in your daily practice that I missed here in this video? If so, please share in the comments below so that we can all learn from each other. I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you again for your time in watching this video and I hope to see you next time. Bye for now.